But Ben Moore, you reviewed Valiant Hearts. I did, Brandon You Jones. enjoyed it. Yeah, a lot, actually. And, uh, you know, we always try to get some, some differing opinions in our editorial reports here. Uh, but we're bringing you in to discuss this because Mr. Kyle Bossman did not like Valiant Hearts a lot. I don't think it was a total wash for you, but you had some issues with Valiant Hearts, so I'm. I'd call. Go, I'd call go it a, on, Kyle. I'd I'm say curious. a total wash. I'd say Valiant Hearts does things within itself that makes it like it undoes all of the good things. It makes it what I call it a fundamental failure. <laughs> See, when I is was that, first, is that the massive? Is that what it says? That's what I would yeah. Failure. Fundamentally flawed. Yeah. You have the woman bandaging some poor soldier. <laughs> yeah. Fundamental failure. Exactly. When you yeah. were first playing it, like the day after you first started playing it, you liked it. I yeah. talked to you and I said, Kyle Bossman, you like it. So Absolutely. This was not, you were not feeling this at the beginning. Something changed within you. You're right. You. I think it's something that arises within the second half of the game. Okay. And Valiant Hearts is a game about World War I. It's a video game about World War I. So it, it's already coming in with like a lot of responsibilities that it sort of drops. It sort of just becomes a silly video game at some point. Uh, oh. There's a moment in the trailer. There's a moment they show it in the trailer, so I feel okay <laughs> ruining this. You're running away from the French army just because you wanted to sneak past them. And you're killing them. You're throwing sticks of dynamite into their tanks just because you were sneaking past them. They're not your enemies. You just stole their uniforms and wanted to sneak by. Are you talking about, give, give this a little context, are you talking about Carl who uh, was sneaking past them? Yeah, yeah, Carl and Anna at that point. Uh, you're sneaking by just to get back to St. Pierre. St. not St. Pierre, something else. Okay, because I don't remember Carl, like, Killing any French soldiers like that. He throws sticks of dynamite into their into their tanks. Mm -hmm. That kills them, Ben. I do, that doesn't. All right, I'm. I'll have to go back and watch that scene because I think I think this is because Carl the entire time like he doesn't. Freddie kills people by throwing grenades like into bunkers and stuff. Yeah. And Emil does knock people out, and he kills somebody at one point towards the end of the game. But Carl just like trades items with people. That's like all he does. He just wants to get out. He's a he's a prisoner of war, right? He doesn't want to be in the German military, and then he gets kidnapped, and he wants to escape. And so most of your time with him, that's all you're trying to do, and there's no violence whatsoever. You're just trying to get past these these barricades. So, so, so far, you guys actually, ha actually haven't talked about any mechanics of the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, so you know, that stuff's you're, okay. You're, I like the puzzles. It, it, which seems like, yeah, it's, but it's... Puzzles it's, are legit. Like the flag one where you, you hoist the flag up into the window. I love that puzzle. Yeah. But it's, it's funny that the story is this concerning to you, whereas if you, you not only are seeing somebody do something, but you're giving the, that you don't agree with, you are given the control to make them do something that you feel they, they would not do. Well, it's that disturbs you enough. No, it's because the big ending of like, oh my gosh, this happened, is just like, I've already done this. We're already, been, we're already through this. Um, and so it's kind of insane that it, it, the ending has no dramatic impact that, on me. Oh my God, I think that's completely wrong. I think yeah. that's just completely and totally wrong. So uh, th there was some confusion. There were some some crossed wires with you, Kyle Bossman, about yeah. the seriousness of not only just the subject matter of war itself, but World War One, this era, yeah. um, and the way that they chose to tell the story. Uh, I'm not saying that one war is one war is better or worse than the other, but uh, World War II is a little more serious, I think, a little more relevant. Um, there were just worse things that happened in World War II. Maybe some mm. some more. Uh, uh, unsettling subject matter that you could deal with. Right, there's no Nazis in World War I. <laughs> like, nobody's that crazy at that point. You so know? is this... Is 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 this gonna is that gonna take it too far? Is they're this doing like it. They're not, doing a sequel, yeah. It, that's I, what it, and I, you're just gonna bonk some Nazis with your shovel. Bonk, you're done. Thanks. I, but 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 something like Indiana Jones has done that. Like the Indiana Jones movies, like dealt with very serious subject matter. Like you're not supposed to laugh when the guy's face melts off. It's very horrifying. Yeah. But there are fun moments. There is, you know, like when he gets his dad involved. There's lots of like knocking people out and stuff. You're right. You're like, right. It, maybe uh, it's just too much or too little or it's. Too, I gotta play. This I have game. a problem <laughs> with your premise, Brandon Jones. Like, uh, I'm really glad. Like, we're, I think the reason why we don't focus. As America about World War One is because we were not as involved in World War One as we were in World War Two, and uh, to say World War Two is is more tragic, I don't think it's true. Like yeah, millions, I'm, I'm, yeah. And millions and millions and millions of people of died, and it's something that World War One. I can't think of another game that has covered World War One, and I'm probably just forgetting something. Oh yeah, I'm not. I'm, but, not, I'm not saying. <clears throat> I'm just talking about the sequel. I'm talking about them moving forward and dealing with another subject matter. Can yeah. they do the? Can they do the same trick twice? 
with this setup, not trick, but like can they, just the format that they've used to tell the story of World War One. Could it apply to two, or would that just be weird? I or would tell could, them to like, like then in the Korean War or something. You know, it's like it's like what 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 subject matter is inappropriate to 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 make not make light of, but to make more uh, acceptable or to make more streamlined. For, go ahead. I think a really cheap character in this game is the Baron. Yeah, I hate the Baron. So there's yeah. an evil <laughs> German Baron, which I think goes against what this game is about, which is like showing you perspectives of war from different angles. And then there's just like. A, an evil German Baron who's evil and the no, like. He's yeah. he's cartoonish. He's cartoonish. He seems Absolutely. like he should be long in GI Joe. Yeah. Not this game. He has a big absurd Zeppelin that just like smashes things down on you. Yeah. He just he like literally just laughs at you as he's throwing grenades and you have no idea why he's doing this other than that he has a big mustache <laughs> yeah. and he's German. So sequel don't don't do stuff like that. I would say. Absolutely. Yeah. I but the thing is is I I think they could do another war because Valiant Hearts to me, as educational as it is about World War One, it's not I would argue that it's not really about World War One. It's not its primary focus. Its primary focus is these characters and what they go through. And you could explore that in a lot of different venues. So as long as you keep it about the characters and not like this is one hundred percent accurate to how like there's so much fictitious stuff in in Valiant Hearts as we were talking about with Baron von Dorf and all yeah. these characters. So that's yes, I think they could do it again. But I do think not all of the characters are equal. I don't really like Freddy that much, for example. Whoa. Um, so Freddy is an American living in France, and at the outbreak of the war, his wife is killed. And he's so upset about it, and he's like, okay, I'm going to join the French forces, and I'm just going to kill all the Germans to, to have my revenge. And I think that's, that's super, super cliché. Uh, the only thing we know about Freddy is that his wife dies, and he's angry about it. And he comes to no resolution on that, No actually, resolution. Right? He doesn't change as a character. <laughs> he doesn't express anything other than, help me, Emil. <laughs> That's it. He does like, I feel like all of these characters have some sort of arc, and they reach, they reach some sort of closure. But Freddy just sort of gets developed in the beginning, and then you just sort of play as him when they want you to switch to another character. Yeah. And at the end, when he's, uh, as Emil is walking to be executed for his uh, betrayal, yeah. he's just like, he just salutes him. You're like, hey, man, it was good hanging out with you. Yeah. Um, so I really don't like Freddy. And I, I feel like they could have just completely cut him. Well, he's in the sequel. <laughs> Valiant Hearts 2. Valiant Hearts 2. World War 2. Yeah, yeah he's the character they show the back of when they show the battleships. Uh, did you play Rayman Legends? I did play Rayman Legends. Did you like Rayman Legends better than Valiant Hearts? What kind of question is that? Oh, because you're talking about UVR? It's the same technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, Princess of Light, what's it called? Child of Light. Child of Light, yeah. Would, also UVR. Would you have liked if they didn't use this technology to tell the story that you like a lot? Was, I, the, I mean, was the technology and the art integral to the way that you enjoyed the story, Ben? I mean... I don't really have a profound answer with this. I mean, it looks really good. All right, well, then I want to ask and something. <laughs> it, it looks significantly different than, than Child of Light or Rayman Legends. So I wasn't, as I was playing it, it wasn't a distraction. I'm like, oh, you know, this looks like Rayman Legends. That's weird. That's so totally different from this game. Like, it has a completely distinct look. So um, I don't think it was a problem that they, they used that art or that engine at all. Actually, I'm not sure a game like this would exist in a more realistic-looking uh, game. Do you know what I mean? Right. Because if it was a first-person game, you would expect to hold guns. Right. I think... I, I totally agree with you. If they made Valiant Hearts even slightly more realistic, like the scenes where you're in the taxi car and uh, you have to dodge obstacles in time to the music, yeah. that wouldn't work at all. And you wouldn't right. accept that as part of a game about World War One. Right. Maybe they'll figure it out. Maybe you'll just... Maybe when you play that World War Two game, Kyle, you'll come into work, tears streaming down your face, and you'll be like, they killed the dog <laughs> yeah, this yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can we talk about the dog a little bit? Okay. I also don't like the dog. Whoa. Dog's um, my favorite part. Walt. Dog is your favorite part. Yeah, Walt is the dog. Okay, so my thing about the dog is in the trailers they made it seem like he would be sort of the connective tissues between these characters. Absolutely, yeah. That all of these different characters would be in a different place experiencing something else and your dog would sort of tie them together. And I feel like that didn't happen at all. The dog shows up and you're like, let's solve puzzles together. Mm -hmm. And he will go and he will grab things for you and he will do all of these tasks. But that's it. He never feels like more than a tool. And what really broke it for me is if you wander off the screen a little bit, he'll just magically appear in front of you panting and like be all happy. Yeah, he's uh, invincible. He's like a little god yeah. dog. Yeah. And I was thinking about it and I'm like, I didn't complain about Elizabeth in Bioshock Infinite being invisible. 
but I th or uh, Ellie being invincible in Last of Us. And yeah. the reason why I don't think it bothers me as much is because the game you're not always seeing them in the action. Like when you're fighting clickers or you know enemies in Bioshock Infinite, you're not really paying attention to Elizabeth. So it's an out of sight, out of mind sort of thing. But when you're solving these puzzles, you're always aware that the dog is right in front of you, especially in a 2D game. And so that really broke it for me. I felt like this thing, I, I can't care about it. He's not adding anything to this story as a puzzle solving tool. Uh, you can press X to pet him though, which is pretty great. I do like that. So. Why is he your favorite part of the game? Is it because press, it, press X to pet? Yeah, uh, he is, because he's a dog, uh, just you don't have to worry about all this complicated things of like, oh man, I just bonked a dude with my shovel. You know what I mean? He's okay. just, you, he can exist outside. He exists, he's the game element of this, of this video game. You know right. what I mean? He's part of that world. And so there's none of this complicated just like, oh, this is war, war is hell. When you got Walt. Because right. Walt's just a great dog. So you're saying when the dog is going and grabbing a stick of dynamite and like a stick, a bone, so you can use it to open a door, yeah. like that doesn't bother you because he's not a human being. You don't right. have as much expert. So it, it makes it easier for you to accept it as a video game. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the dog in Fable 2 or the dog in Valiant Hearts? Valiant Hearts. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Uh, just, I don't like Fable. <laughs> so so if, if the development team was in front of you right now and they were like, oh, okay, like, you, you, you played our game, what do you think? Yeah. Like, you would, you'd be like, you failed. Try again. No, uh, I would say try again. I would say there's a fun game beneath all of this. I'd say, no, Baron, take your story a little more seriously uh, and account for how each action will lead up into the next action after that. Brandon Jones, yes. what do you think? We've been talking about... Valiant Hearts, and you, you read my review. Mm. Uh, is this something that you want to play? Is this something you're interested in? Um, I, I It takes a lot of brain power for me to finish a puzzle game to its completion, just because uh, when I get stuck in any game, I, I, I really evaluate whether I want to play something else. <laughs> you know, whenever I just totally hit a wall, I'm like, gosh, I just don't know what to do. Yeah. You know, are, you, are you the kind of person... What would be faster, looking it up or starting another game? Would you use the hint system in the game? Are you opposed to doing that? Nope. Okay. Uh, I've definitely played some iPad adventure games. So I'm just like, I'll look it up or... Or uh, my favorites are ones that they're like, well, if you just want to do this extra thing. I, a couple I've played have like little mini games, and if you finish the mini game, that'll give you a hint. I, uh, I will so say. I don't mind cheating. I have no problem with that. I don't think I'm particularly amazing at adventure games like some of the old classic LucasArts games. I, I always have to look up because yeah. I get stuck. Here, I think the puzzles are really well designed in the sense that the areas you're solving me in are pretty contained, so you never have to wander around looking for things too much. Yeah. Um, and so I was always, like, within five to ten minutes, I, I would have my solution. Yeah, it's actually without. really good about that. I turned hints off because it's like, I, there's a bottle here. I know I have to do something with the bottle. Right. And it's, that, it's that simple. It's like, what do I do with this thing? It's, and what you can interact with and what you can't interact with is very clearly yeah. labeled. Because, um, again, sweet 2D game, it's like... You know, it's like those cartoons where one panel with like a of the barrel would be like a different color. You're like, oh, that barrel's gonna explode, right. and then yeah. it does. Yeah, it's like that. You know. Uh, is this on tablets yet? Is this maybe going to be on tablets? This Do would be know? an easy tablet game. It would be. I uh, would play the hell out of this on a tablet. I'd love that. That'd yeah. be great. And I would love the the way that it would look on like an iPad. Yeah. Just the art. Just any of that art. Child of Light on a tablet, maybe. Know, yes. Like... That'd be cool. <sighs> Oh, um, so yeah, clearly, a World, World, a World War One game should not be a casual game, though. Is my issue. You know what I mean? That's where it's like, you know, if you have a tablet while you're like watching Sports Center and just like, oh, okay, now I'm, you know, to me, like that sort of speaks to the problem of this game, where it's like a simple puzzle game that's handling maybe uh, issues that it's not prepared to handle. Well, I'll be the judge of that. When it comes out of tablet, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll play it. Okay. And then we'll, we'll, we'll have this the World War again. II game will come out. Yeah. We'll come back. And we'll bitch about that. Thanks, guys.